Hello and welcome. I'd like to give a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. I will discuss more on that later in the video, but for now, without further ado, let's begin with the materials that you're going to be needing to root the hair. To root the hair, you will need needles. You're going to want a needle that is very, very thin and wire cutters to cut the very tip of it. And then I put a little eraser to keep track of where it's at at all times. You will also need hair. You're going to want it in cl as close to the hair color of your reference as possible. You're going to want a, a natural type of hair fiber. So I'm using human hair. I recommend mohair, which is another type of natural hair that comes from some animal. I want to say some goat. You definitely do not want to use a synthetic fiber because I do not know if it will hold up in 275 degrees. You're going to need some scissors. You're also going to need an oven and a reliable oven. Now let's get right into rooting the hair. We're going to get our hair, which is right here, freshly cut off of my head. So we have this, which we had protected. I'm going to look at where the hairline would be. And we're going to just very lightly mark the hairline. From the looks of it, it looks like the hairline starts up here. So I'm looking at a profile view so I can tell exactly how far back his hairline goes, and then it comes back in. So now we are up close to the head. And how we are going to do this, I'm just gonna cover up the rest of his face. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna work back forwards. So you're gonna get your hair, which I got right here. And I'm gonna pull out just a small amount right here. And take your needle. I am just going to take that needle and make sure that the fork is facing towards the hair like this. So starting from the very, very back like this, grab a little chunk of hair and push it in. And try to push it in pretty deep. This ensures that it won't come out. Push it in deep and pull it out. In the back parts here, you don't have, you can grab a big chunk of hair and push it into each part. When we get closer to the hairline at the front, where it is a lot more noticeable, you're going to definitely want to make sure that we are putting less hair in each follicle. And the reason why we want to do less hair in each follicle is it makes it look more realistic. So here, as you can see, I am making the hairs a lot more with each follicle I'm only taking out one or two or maybe three hairs and kind of making them more dense here so that it looks more full and it looks more realistic whereas over here there were a lot more hairs per follicle so now here I have added some of the hair to this side and as I was rooting the hair I was rooting it kind of going in at an angle because most of the time our hair we kind of train it to go a certain way so I've made the little part here and I'm going to go in with a bunch of little tiny hairs closer to the hairline just to make it look a little more natural um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm starting to go in from the opposite direction and I'm just grabbing just the tiniest bit of hair and we want to make sure that the hair part doesn't look too empty. Now that we have some of the hair already placed in, I'm just gonna leave it right here for a little bit. Now here, we're gonna start doing the eyebrows. So as I'm looking at the reference, I'm gonna make note of where the eyebrow begins. Be very gentle, you definitely do not wanna push any of the clay back. I'm gently resting my hand on the top of his hair. I can tell that the eyebrows begin at around right here. So I'm just marking right there. The bottom cuts across like so. We're gonna use this the same technique that we used for the hair. Now something that you're gonna want to keep in mind, you're gonna want to look at how the hair grows out of the eyebrow. So usually here they kind of stick up at an angle here about this type of angle and then as it grows to the sides it begins to go completely this way. 
Now, another thing to consider when putting in the eyebrows, you're gonna wanna put in one hair at a time. Cover around the eyebrow as I'm working on it because right now it's kind of going all over the place. Okay, so now that I have, for the most part, the basic form here of the eyebrow, I'm just gonna trim it back some. We're not gonna trim it all the way quite yet. I'm gonna wait until we're all done, but I'm just gonna massage the hairs to go in the direction that I want. I'm gonna get started on the other side and then I'm gonna go back and forth and just kind of add additional little individual hairs where I see fit. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at the reference very closely and add in the hairs individually to this side. So I got the basic shape, but there's still a little bit more touching up that I gotta do. Um, so for example here, um, I know I said generally there's eyebrows that go up and this way, so I've got that in, but now that I'm looking at it, there's also hairs that come in from the top down. Um, and merging into this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just add those hairs and on this side as well I'm gonna get these inner hairs these little individual ones and then also at the top it needs to be filled out a little bit and then I am just going to Make the illusion of hair Because these ones that are really close to the front um, No matter how hard I try this little end is a little bit too thick. So the holes that it makes is kind of hard to make go away. So I'm just actually using the needle to create like hair-like texture and then we're gonna paint that in later. As long as it's just not all painted, I think that it can give a pretty realistic look. The next part of this fun is going to be the beard. I'm just gonna roughly mark around here very lightly into the clay and we are just covering. Got my tool and I'm gonna start here and work my way this way and this way and out. So I've went ahead and filled in any gaps. So here I've got my one eyelash. Take it to about Now here, again, what I'm going to do is I am just going to minimize the hole by lightly blending it. Just smoothing that out. I'm just going to look at him. Just any place that needs adjustment and creating a bone that I see. Now that we have the hair, we can kind of see where everything goes. We're going to be doing all of the uh, trimming and hair cutting after we've baked the clay. So here, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of water and just wet the hair. Try not to wet the polymer clay, just the hair. This particular clay, you're going to bake for 15 minutes every quarter of an inch. So this is pretty thick. I would say it's about two and a half inches. So we're gonna bake it for two and a half hours. At every hour, we're going to wet the hair, put it back in the oven. And then once it's all baked, we're gonna cover it when it gets out with that kitchen towel to make sure that it just goes back to room temperature very slowly just to prevent any type of cracks. Now something very important, please be sure that you do not leave this unattended in the oven and check every 15 minutes. Some ovens are not the most reliable. They might have heat fluctuations. Make sure also that this is at the very center of the oven because if it's too close to the top or too close to the bottom, you're gonna have more extreme temperatures. Only do this method if you're an adult Gonna put it in. I let it cool down overnight, see what is inside. The last thing that we gotta really do is to trim back some of these hairs. Here are the scissors. I like to use hair cutting scissors. You don't really have to, but I like the clean look of the finished product. So I'm just trying to focus on the upper lashes. Now the lower lashes. Again, just trim very lightly. Don't trim too much off. I to go a little bit at a time. Okay. 
and doing the same thing over here. With the beard and the hair, we're going to want to follow a similar style that we see in the reference picture. Make sure you're not getting too close to the skin. And if you find that there's any little tiny patches, paint some of the individual like patchy areas. Men's haircuts typically follow a square shape, so the sides tend to be a little tight, and then the top would be longer. So here we got that long top. These parts need to come down to about there, and then keep that top part a little long. When cutting texture, you're kind of going into the hair like so, to the other side. We're going to do essentially the same thing. Bring it up to about, if it helps kind of separate the hair a little bit to where you can see the other side because typically this side and this side will mirror each other. It kind of blends into it. So here is the rooted hair, the result of the rooted hair. Stay tuned for the next video where I'm going to be creating the eyes. And then after that, we'll finally get into the painting where we're going to color correct his hairs and, co and also color correct his face. All of the materials for making the face part of the sculpt is in my description. And now to our sponsors. I'd like to give a huge thank you again to Squarespace. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create your website. I personally have been using Squarespace for many years now for my own personal arts website. Squarespace has many amazing features such as the commerce platform where you can sell your work directly or bill for design services. They offer beautiful award-winning designer templates. You can also display work using Squarespace's portfolio and galleries feature. Their image blocks ensure that your photos always look exactly right. Go to squarespace.com slash shoemakerart to get a free trial and 10% off of your first purchase. Thank you again for watching today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.